Hi, my name is Morgan Perry, and I'm the founder of Vino Vinyasa. Vino Vinyasa combines wine education and yoga, and each class ends with a wine tasting. So today I'm here at Wine Enthusiast for 40 Under 40 Live, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about the trend of wellness in the wine industry, and then we're going to go into an abbreviated version of one of our classes. So we'll do about a 15 minute yoga flow ending with a wine tasting, and today we'll be learning about Pinot Grigio and doing a little tasting at the end. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so wellness in the wine industry, this is clearly something that uh, I live every day because what we offer at Vino Vinyasa is a little bit of yoga and a little bit of wine. And uh, this is really uh, consumers and our students really do want uh, to live a healthy life, but they also do still, they're interested in learning about wine, they want that balance. Um, according to a Mintel food and drink survey from last year, they actually see that the trend of alcoholic beverages, beverage sales is going down. So why would that be? They think that that's because people are focused more on wellness, and this is something that I see every day. People do want to be healthy, but they still want to learn about and drink wine. So for this reason, we offer two half glasses of wine at the end of our classes. They're definitely drinking in moderation, and it really allows them to balance their love of wellness with their love of wine. I think it really boils down to a bigger trend, though, and this is really wellness in terms of what you're putting into your body. So eating and drinking better. There are many, many statistics out there about this, and one that I found from monitoringthefuture.org uh, really talked a lot about millennials and how they're dedicated to wellness and they're really driving this trend. Uh, we have a lot of millennial students at Vino Vinyasa, so I definitely see this to be true. So the Washington Post also wrote an article about how millennials really want the truth from food manufacturers. So they noted that when millennials are asked about what healthy food is, what they tell you is that it's natural, organic, sustainable, or even locally sourced. So people are more interested in learning how the food was sourced and grown and how that also affects their carbon footprint. This translates into wine as well, of course. And people definitely want to know what they're drinking, how it was made, and because of this, I'm seeing this every day in our classes, I get asked a lot about the wines that we're tasting, and I get asked a lot about sustainable wines, organic wines, and even biodynamic wines. Uh, we do focus on working with sustainable producers when possible, and I want to serve wines to my students, wines that I believe in. But what is sustainable wine? This is uh, something that I get asked a lot. And the official definition from the Wine Institute defines it as a comprehensive set of practices that are envi environmentally sound, socially equitable, and economically viable. But what does that really mean? It means that they're focusing on things like energy and water conservation, the use of renewable resources, greenhouse gas emissions, pest management, and even their role in the community. I recently visited the wine region of Alto Adige in northern Italy, and almost every winery told us that they were using minimal pesticides, and they were trying their hardest to let the wines be made in the vineyard and not in the winery. A lot of the farmers, they have uh, these uh, vineyards, and they think about the vineyards as their garden. So they have their family running around the garden, and obviously they're trying not to use as a ton of pesticides, right? Because they have their kids, their families there. They also noted that they really just want to leave these vineyards in a place for future generations. So I think that's a really simple way to think about sustainability, leaving the land in a better place than you found it. So there are also a lot of sustainable certifications that wineries are able to get, and this really varies by country and even by state. So I can't really go into all that right now because we would have an entire segment on that, but actually Wine Enthusiast has a great article that goes into details, and the link should be below, hopefully. <laughs> uh, there's also a blog post on my website, vinovinyasayoga.com, about the difference between sustainable, organic, and biodynamic wine. So it's kind of a brief overview of that because it is a question that we get asked a lot. So check that out if you're interested. But for now, let's go into our yoga flow. As I mentioned, usually it's a 45-minute flow with wine facts, 
and then a wine tasting. Today we're going to have an abbreviated version of that. And because I was just visiting Alto Adige in northern Italy, we're going to focus today on Pinot Grigio from Alto Adige. So let's go ahead and take a seat to get started for our yoga flow. So just like any wine class, we start our Vino Vinyasa classes off by focusing on our breath. So find a comfortable seat, sit up tall and just close your eyes. Just take a few breaths. Maybe you've had a long, crazy day, so just letting those thoughts go by. Start to lengthen your breath, so inhaling and exhaling. And as you exhale, you may want to constrict the back of your throat. So we're building some heat in our bodies by this breathing. We're also starting to calm our nervous system. One more breath, and then let's make our way to hands and knees. So we'll move into cat-cow. So shoulders over wrists, hips over heels. And as you inhale, lift your head, neck, chest, and tailbone up. And then as you exhale, chin to chest, navel to spine, dropping your tailbone down. So keep moving with your own breath in some cat-cow movements. So Pinot Grigio, though the grape makes white wines, it's actually a grayish purple colored grape, and it's a mutation of Pinot Noir, which as we, as we all know is a black grape. So let's go ahead and make our way back to a neutral spine. And from here, just bring your right arm out in front of you like you're shaking someone's hand. And then we'll bring our left leg out in front of us. So our first little balance challenge of class, just trying to find some stability here and through our core. Our left toes are pointing down towards the ground. We're bringing that shoulder blade down our back. Inhale here and then go ahead and exhale. Bring everything back to the mat. And we'll take that on the other side. So left arm out in front of us, right leg comes back behind us. We're trying to find some stability here. So Pinot Grigio is actually the Italian name for the grape. Pinot Gris is the French name. And Pinot uh, and Grigio and Gris both actually mean gray because of this color of the grape. So let's go ahead and bring our fingertips down, bring our toes back down. From here, we're going to step into a plank pose, so the top of a push-up. For our plank pose, what we're looking for here, again, shoulders over wrists. We're looking to find a nice straight line from our shoulders through our hips. One breath here, inhale, exhale. On your next inhale, push forward onto your fingertips. Shoulders come in front of wrists. And then we're going to chaturanga, so hugging our elbows in towards our body, come all the way down to the mat. Once we're here, just a little baby cobra inhale, lifting head, neck, and chest up, and exhale back down. So you can take one more just like that, or you can take a full cobra if you want. For full cobra, you'll go ahead and straighten out your arms. The tops of your thighs are still on your mat. And from here, wherever you are, we're going to make our way to downward dog. So you can move through plank, hands and knees, you can push back. So downward facing dog, upside down V-shape. What we're looking for here is length through that spine. So you may want to take a nice little bend in your knees, maybe pedal your feet out left and right, finding that nice length, and then go ahead and come up towards the front of your mat, so crawling your feet up towards the front of your mat, we'll meet in a forward fold, and come all the way up to stand. So standing at the top of your mat in Tadasana, and a lot of you guys probably know this pose if you practice yoga, but being mindful of how we're standing, so pushing into all four corners of our feet, they can be, our big toes can be touching, our feet can be hip distance apart. Lifting up through your kneecaps, engaging through your core, shoulder blades moving down your back, Tadasana. So let's inhale, arms up towards the sky. We'll bring our first finger and our thumb pointing up towards the sky, inhale, get tall. Exhale, lean over to your right, little side twist, side stretch. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, over to the other side. Inhale, back to center, and exhale, we'll take our wine glass arms. So we do take wine glass arms. Normally in yoga, you do cactus, but we have a little fun in our classes. So inhale, get tall, and exhale, little baby back bend. Inhale, come all the way down, forward fold. Maybe let's take that ragdoll fold. So grabbing opposite elbows, just hang down here for a minute, rock back and forth, try taking some bends through your knees. Really enjoying this lower back stretch. 
So we're tasting a Pinot Grigio from Alto Adige in northern Italy. It's the most cultivated white grape in the region. And Alto Adige is actually one of the smallest wine regions in Italy, but it's one of the most diverse because it's where the Alpine and Mediterranean climates meet. So from your forward fold, go ahead and drop your hands down towards your mat. We'll move through our first vinyasa. So inhale, just lift halfway, finding some length through our spine, shoulder blades down our back, the back of our neck is long. And then exhale, drop those fingertips down, stepping our right leg back, left leg back, coming back through that plank pose, pushing forward as we inhale, as we exhale, chaturanga, maybe coming only halfway down this time. Inhale for your cobra or maybe your upper dog to where the tops of your thighs is not on your mat. Shoulder blades moving down our back here, opening that chest up. Inhale here and then exhale back to our downward facing dog. From our downward facing dog this time, inhale right leg up towards the sky and exhale let's plant that right foot between our hands and if it doesn't make it there there's no worries this is a wine tasting class we're going to drop our back knee and bring our left fingertips in line with our right toes from here go ahead and inhale right arm up towards the sky so really reaching up reaching up towards these alps right so we are in northern italy we see the alps there um, there are a lot of high altitude vineyards in Alto Adige, but as I mentioned, it's very diverse and multifaceted, so there's also a lot of wine that's grown on the warmer valley floors. So let's go ahead and bring those fingertips down towards the mat, tuck your back toes under, and step up. Let's meet in a forward fold at the top of our mats, and then come all the way up, meeting in Tadasana. Just take a quick breath here. Inhale. And exhale. We'll take that on the other side. So inhale, arms come up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lifting halfway. Exhale, plant your hands on your mat. Stepping right foot back, left foot back, or maybe you're hopping through this time if you want to hop through to your chaturanga, upward facing dog or cobra, and we'll meet in downward dog. So you can always skip these vinyasas if it's a little much on your shoulders. From our downward facing dog, inhale, left leg up. Stepping left leg through, trying to line our left toes and right fingertips up, dropping our back knee down, and then go ahead and inhale, reaching up with those left fingertips. So Alto Adige is near the border of Austria and Switzerland, and it actually used to be part of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. And this is still a really, really big influence on the wines and the culture today. So there's a lot of German spoken there, even though you're in Italy. And a lot of the labels still have some German on them. So go ahead and bring those fingertips down. Stepping our back toes up. And come on, we'll meet in our forward fold and come all the way up to stand. So you'll see Sud Tirol on the capsule on the top of the bottles. And this is the German name for the region. So starting in our Tadasana, where we're going to move into every yogi's favorite pose, chair pose. So from here, go ahead and bend your knees. And what you're looking for here first is make sure you can see your toes. And then make sure you're not overarching your lower back. And then reach arms up towards the sky. What I like to do here is I like to spin my pinky fingers in towards each other. It brings my shoulder blades down my back, trying to keep those arms nice and long. Inhale here. Exhale, sink low. We are going to be drinking wine later, so we have to work for it. One more breath, inhale. And exhale, forward fold. So again, moving through that optional vinyasa. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, planting your hands. Moving through your flow, or maybe just meeting us in downward facing dog, yogi's choice. From our downward facing dog, we'll inhale right leg up towards the sky. Exhale, plant that foot between your hands. And this time, inhale, come on up, high lunge. What we're looking for in our high lunge, right knee at a right angle over our right ankle. That is my favorite tongue twister. Inhale here. And as you exhale, spinning your back heel down, opening up warrior two. So I like to bring my feet into the same plane, pushing into the back edge of our left foot, gazing over fingertips. One more breath here in our warrior two. So today, what we're going to be looking at when we're tasting our wine, we're going to be looking at notes of apple, pear. Uh, today, I was even noticing some candied fruit, maybe some honeydew, melon, minerality, 
uh, some lemon. This is from a higher altitude um, winery, so we are going to be getting a little bit more uh, minerality today in our wines. So let's go ahead and reverse our warrior, so flipping that front palm, really feeling that nice side stretch through our right side. You can take a half bind or not. Try to keep that same bend in your front knee. And then let's cartwheel our hands down. Moving through your vinyasa or not, yogi's choice, we'll meet in downward dog. <sighs> keep breathing. So really focusing on those long breaths when we started class. From here, you can walk, step, or hop up towards the front of your mat. If you're going to take a hop, bring your big toes to touch, bend your knees, look between your hands, and try taking that little hop up. Come all the way up, we'll meet in our Tadasana at the top of our mats. So we'll go ahead and take that on the other side. So just inhaling here once in our Tadasana. On your next inhale, arms come up. And exhale, moving into our chair pose. So again, trying to see if you can sink a little bit lower today in our chair pose. So another standout factor from many wines from Alto Adizé, especially from higher altitude, is high acidity. And this will add a freshness to the wine and make your mouth water. So this is something that we'll look for today when we do our tasting. All right, guys, go ahead and forward fold. So I want to make you hold your chair pose for too long. Moving through that optional vinyasa, so lifting halfway, dropping hands, Moving through your flow, however that looks for you today. We'll meet in downward facing dog. And then from here, inhaling left leg towards the sky. Stepping that foot through or helping yourself get it there. Coming on up to that high lunge. Checking our knee, feeling strong in our legs, opening up. As we exhale, warrior two, gazing over those front fingertips. And the wine we're tasting today is going to be a little bit more on the medium-bodied side for a white wine. So that's how I like to describe body and wine is thinking about milk, right? So it's more like a 2% milk versus a skim milk, which would be a lighter-bodied wine, and a whole milk, which would be a fuller-bodied wine. So let's go ahead and flip that front palm, reaching back, feeling that nice side stretch through our left side, keeping that bend in our knee. One more breath here. And then exhale, cartwheeling your hands down. Moving through your vinyasa, or maybe just meeting us in downward dog, yogi's choice. From here, let's walk, step, or hop up towards the front of your mat. And we'll work into our balancing part of class. So this is a pretty abbreviated version today. But we do like to have a balancing part of our flow because this really allows people to uh, see how it allows me to see how you guys are balancing before you have wine and then after. That's not really why, <laughs> but I do like to make that joke because it's really about I get to talk about balance in wine and why do we need balance in wine? Uh, we don't want it to have too much alcohol. We don't want if, it, if it's a red too much tannin, for example. Uh, we really want all these flavors to merge together to create something pleasant. We don't want to just taste lemon, for example, right? We want to have lots of flavors and have it all in balance. So for our balancing part of class today, let's move into tree pose. So tree pose, let's getting strong in our left leg. And you can also start with just having your right foot maybe on your ankle or shin. This could be your tree pose. Your hips are square. Uh, if you want to move into a full tree pose, I usually help myself open my right leg up and then place my foot on my thigh to create stability, pushing your thigh into your foot, your foot into your thigh. So bringing your hands at heart center, or maybe your arms can go up. Tree pose. This is a fun pose to teach because we can do this after class holding our wine glasses. From here, we're going to be moving into our one leg Tadasana. So just bring that right leg out in front of us. And then moving into warrior three, so this is definitely a balancing challenge. The hardest version is to keep your arms up. Easier is hands at heart center. Inhale. As you exhale, kicking that right leg back, moving your torso forward. So what we're looking for here, lifting that chest slightly, trying to get that leg up, toes pointing towards the ground. You should feel this in the back of your left thigh. You can take a micro bend in that knee. And then go ahead and drop your hands down. A lot of yoga teachers call this pose standing splits, uh, but I like to call this corkscrew pose. So let's come on up. 
looks like a little corkscrew. And I don't really know many people that can do standing splits. Certainly not me. And we're all about making wine accessible and also making yoga accessible. So no standing splits for us. <laughs> we'll take our tree pose on the other side now. So getting strong in that right leg, figuring out where your tree pose is on this side. And maybe it might feel very different than the other side. And that's OK. Again, no judgment. This is a wine tasting yoga class. So we keep things pretty casual. Hands come to heart center here in our tree pose. We'll hold this for a couple of breaths. Um, so in all Tadege, they do use oak on some of their white wines, but it's usually very minimal, and it's usually neutral oak or used, used barrels. Uh, today, we are going to be tasting a wine. The one I'm tasting is, has 20% of it uh, was aged in some oak. And really what this does is just adds a little bit of body to the wine. Um, it adds a little bit to the structure of the wine, but it doesn't come out in like a lot of uh, oaky flavors or anything like that. So again, moving into that one leg Tadasana. And then deciding how you want to try your warrior three. You can always try having arms out if you felt good on the other side. Maybe you move into airplane arms. So just finding some balance here. Maybe this side is your harder side. Trying to keep those hips square towards the ground. One more inhale here on your next exhale. Moving into that corkscrew pose. Getting that nice hamstring stretch. And then bring those big toes to touch. So coming on up to stand. So let's move on to our mats now. We'll start to wind down, pun intended, and <laughs> making our way back to hands and knees. So this is how we started class. And just taking a couple minutes here just to feel if anything feels different. I usually like to turn my wrists around, get a different kind of stretch here. Maybe you can move from side to side. And once you've got a little movement in, let's go ahead and bring that right arm up towards the sky. And we'll take a nice little shoulder stretch, just threading our right arm underneath our left. We're going to end with our cheek and our shoulder, our right cheek and shoulder on our mat. So this is a nice little stretch. I'm not going to take it because I'm going to talk to you guys about some food pairings. So we usually end our class, uh, we do talk about uh, the grape a little like we've done in the region, and then we talk a little bit about food pairings because uh, we want you guys to be able to know what to eat with these wines, right? So uh, Pinot Grigio, as I mentioned, um, a lot of these, especially in this region, will have some, some higher acid. Uh, and what does acid do? Well, it makes your mouth water. And that means it's a great food wine, right? Because that acts like a palate cleanser. So it goes with lots and lots of food. Um, pairings, when I was there, uh, definitely had with some, uh, some noodles, some dumplings. Uh, but you can also have uh, seafood as a really... Uh, typical pairing, and also things like buttery pastas. Because of that acidity, it can kind of cut through that fat of that butter. So let's go ahead and come out of our stretch. And as you do that, just bringing that right arm up one more time, counter stretch. And then let's take that on the other side. So go ahead and bring left arm up towards the sky. And then threading that arm under. This is one of my favorite stretches. So I'm jealous of you guys at home today getting to take it. I'll take it after this. So also, because of this high acidity, we can think about Pinot Grigio with things like salad dressing, like a citrus dressing. So definitely a good salad wine. I've been eating a lot of salads this summer. Um, definitely Pinot Grigio is one of my go-tos for that. But also, again, because of that acidity, uh, can go with cold cuts um, and other meat, right? So pork and chicken are, are pretty typical pairings for Pinot Grigio. So let's go ahead and come out of that stretch. And again, taking that counter stretch, left arm comes up. And then find your way back to seated on your mat. So normally we would end our class with Shavasana. And you're definitely welcome to take a Shavasana uh, after this. If you don't have your wine to taste today, uh, please feel free to take your Shavasana. And I do find that the kind of allowing your body to absorb all the facts and uh, also to absorb all of the asanas, the physical practice, it opens your mind up. It gets you into a really clear headspace to do the wine tasting. And for me, this is why I think that the wine tasting goes so well with the yoga is because you are, uh, you're coming out of this really zen place of your shavasana. Uh, but today, let's just go ahead and close our eyes. And again, focusing on our breath. So uh, similar to how we did when we started class, just taking a moment to breathe. We don't need to actually do anything to change our breath. We don't need to lengthen it. Just sit and notice how your breath is after doing a little bit of movement.
as your eyes are closed, imagine these gray grapes, Pinot Grigio grapes, growing in Alto Adige in northern Italy. And the sun is shining down. It does get quite warm there in the summer. I can attest to that. It was there a few weeks ago. And this bright sunshine making these grapes, uh, they're getting bigger and juicier. And finally, they're picked and harvested in the fall. And then they are crushed and they are fermented and potentially aged in steel or oak for a little bit of time. Um, bottled and corked and sent to us. So it's a lot that goes into making wines, obviously. Um, and we like to appreciate that in our classes. And so let's go ahead and open our eyes. And if you do have a wine in front of you, uh, what we do in our classes is a pretty basic mindful tasting. And we know, if you're watching this uh, wine enthusiast, I assume uh, you're into wine. So you guys already know that wine tasting is mindful, right? So we are noticing everything. We do a very simple uh, see, swirl, smell, sip, savor. Uh, so let's get to it. So today, the wine I'm tasting, um, just checking out the color. Uh, it's definitely kind of a, a straw yellow. Um, it's, it's hard to tell because I don't have anything white to put this against, but um, a little bit of golden in here. Um, just kind of noticing the color, I usually encourage my students, I say, you know, we're sitting on the ground in yoga clothes, so let's have some fun. Uh, let's name some fun tasting notes. If you're getting gummy bears, I want to hear about it. If you're getting, uh, what did we get the other day? Big red gum, I want to hear about it. So we have an open forum. Everyone's kind of involved in our tastings. Today it's just me, so I'll try to have fun with myself for you guys. So um, the next thing that we do is we're going to go ahead and give it a little swirl and then give it a little smell. So again, I don't know what you guys are tasting at home. Um, this is a pretty uh, concentrated flavor, uh, and this is another thing that I noticed in the region that a lot of the whites, um, Pinot Grigio and Pinot Bianco and Gewürztraminer that we were trying uh, were very concentrated uh, in flavor in, in, uh, on the nose as well. So definitely getting some apple that we talked about, some of that stone fruit, maybe some pear. I'm getting more of like a candied fruit on this one, like a candied pear. Potentially, like, I want to say it's some sort of nut, like maybe some almonds. But let's go ahead and give it a taste. So I encourage my students usually to take a couple sips, um, really let your brain catch up with what's happening on your palate. Uh, so for me, I usually ask people if they're tasting what they smelled, right? So that's kind of the first step. And I would say I am. Again, very intense flavors. Uh, that candied fruit's really kind of coming out. It's, it's a dry wine, but it's so concentrated that uh, it's, it's very lovely. So I hope you guys did go and get some Pinot Grigio today uh, from this region because there's some really, really special uh, wines that are being produced there. So really concentrated, getting that lemon, getting that, uh, that kind of pear, apple, uh, maybe even a little bit of like honeydew melon. And then I tell people, um, let's go ahead and notice a couple of, of things about wines, right? So for this wine right now, off the bat, I'm noticing the acidity. Uh, so it is making my mouth water. And how I do this with my students is usually I have them take a sip and then leave their mouth hanging open. So then we notice how much we salivate and how quickly we salivate. So let's go ahead and I'll try that. And we look really cool too, so... I always talk about, let's do this on a date. <laughs> Look really cool. Yeah, so that acidity, for me, it's coming really quickly. It's definitely there. Amazing food wine, right, because of this. Um, and that's kind of a fun skill that you can take with you and use anywhere. And maybe you can become a little more subtle about it so you don't have to leave your mouth hanging so open. Um, and then for this wine, I, I also just want to note quickly on the body. Um, I do think, as I mentioned, body is kind of how it feels in your mouth. There are a lot of things that contribute to this. There's a little oak on this wine um, helping to contribute to that. It's definitely more of a medium bodied white. So usually we do compare two wines, so it's kind of fun to be able to see a lighter bodied and, and a more full bodied. Uh, today we have th just one wine. We're doing an abbreviated version, but just thinking of other wines that you've tasted that were really, really light um, and noticing how this feels in your mouth, right? 
Um, so just to finish it off, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the finish of the wine, and that's really just how long you are tasting these yummy flavors in your mouth. Uh, so I usually kind of ask people, take a sip, count to five, 10, 15, and just notice how long you're still tasting. And I'm honestly still kind of tasting this. Uh, so I'm gonna say that this wine has a long finish, and that's obviously a sign of quality. And I learned when I was uh, visiting the region, there are a lot of really high quality wines being made. So that makes sense that we have a long finish on this wine. So that's really it today. Uh, that's how we do our classes. We have classes in New York City, in Austin, Texas, and in Los Angeles, and hopefully coming to more places soon. But we also do private events. So if you're located in any of those markets and you're interested in us coming to your office, or we also do a lot of bachelorette parties, birthday parties, please let us know. Our website is vinovinyasayoga.com and we're also vinovinyasayoga on Instagram. So I hope you guys will follow us. Reach out to me if you're interested in hosting an event. And I hope you guys have a wonderful Wine Wednesday. Cheers and namaste.